So guys, it seems as if it's gonna be a very long season for Liverpool. It is. You know, there's a lot of positives to take from the game and there's also a lot of negatives and a lot of holes that Liverpool need to fill because that was not a good performance yesterday against a relatively new look Chelsea team under new manager in Maurizio Pochettino who knows the landscape of the Premier League very well but still man I expected Liverpool to be all over Chelsea especially when they scored that early goal and then you know big up to Luis Diaz that was a really good pass by I think Trent Alexander-Arnold then to Salah and that pass from Salah to Ale um to Luis Diaz exquisite man great finish as well and then Salah scored but that goal was chalked off for offside and I was like okay so Chelsea you know what I mean are gonna get mauled today but that wasn't the case that really wasn't the case Chelsea hit back they hit back with um Axel Di Sassi their new signee there's a lot of them there's a lot of new um, players as well but Axel Di Sassi with that very good goal played in a center forward position seeing he's a center back and not very well defended by Liverpool not well cleared and then Trent Alexander-Arnold not tracking the sassy properly guilty of ball watching and Alessi was beaten I think Chelsea actually should have won that game because they had the better chances created the better chances a few chances for the, the new man up top Nicholas Jackson as well who I don't really see as an out and out striker. I thought he was like a winger type of player, but I guess he's a striker. But, you know, he got to work on his finishing, man. You know what I'm saying? The way he looks is reminiscent of Didier Drogba. He just looks his, the way his face shapes up and everything. But, you know, he, he needs to be clutch like Drogba as well. But um, I have to say, I was not impressed with Liverpool. You know, Klopp and his boys got a lot of things to work on. Positives, Dominic Shubasly, he looks good. He looks like he's going to fit in seamlessly. Hope, hopefully he stays fit for Liverpool. And Alexis McAllister basically played out of position. He's not a holding midfielder, really. He can play the role, but he's more comfortable when he's allowed to go forward and do his thing. So it just shows you what Liverpool are lacking. They're lacking someone in the DM position. That's why they, they, they went all out for Caicedo and they, he rejected them. Of course, we know that by now he joined Chelsea and they're going for Romeo Lavia. But I don't think, I don't know. Liverpool are going in for Lavia, but I don't think Lavia was actually, is actually their first choice or else they would have already got him. You see what I'm saying? So Liverpool got something to work out though, but in that regard, guys, I think there's capable enough players. I think Liverpool needs somebody established in, in that position and not a youngster. You see what I mean? So yeah, there's players out there that Liverpool could, could sign up, but I guess there's some skepticism in doing so. Because it's Liverpool. They need they, they want the elite, the best of the best. So I think that's a position that Liverpool has to work out, man. And I think they need someone capable. Well, they have Joe Gomez, but I think there's some. they need someone capable. Capable who could play um, right back and allow maybe Trent Alexander-Arnold to, you know, go into midfield. Uh, but he's not that good defensively. And I know people are going to argue and say, yeah, he is. But he's not that good defensively. So then... You, you, you don't really want to have him in a defensive midfield position because he's not a defender by trade. You know what I mean? He, he's an attacking midfielder by trade. If you really, you know, suss the whole thing out. But um, left back also seems like that could be another problem because last season, Andy Robertson was not good. You see? And the way I saw Reese James and Cole just glide down the right-hand side for Chelsea... And just, you know, was doing their thing. It's a cause for concern for Liverpool. Players got to step their game up. Van Dijk, Konate. These guys do not look at their best. And maybe it's maybe it's very early and they need time to click. 
But these guys did not look at their best. I think Chelsea got in behind way too often. You see? And maybe they should have gone on to win the game. I was I was very impressed with Chelsea because I was thinking, ah, this team full of youngsters, you know what I mean? A few established players in there, but still, for the most part, it's it's a lot of new faces, you know what I mean? Thiago Silva looks solid. De Sassi, we know how good he is, plays for the French national team. You know, um, Reese James is back fit. He's the new captain. Ben Chilwell was very attacking in the game. Even that goal that he scored, I got disallowed. Like the way they, the way they went around Liverpool's defense is like shocking. You see what I mean? Just simply shocking. <laughs> the likes of Connie Chuck Wumaker, um, Connor Gallagher. These guys, these guys played well. Enzo Fernandez bossed the game. You see, Raheem Sterling had some glimpses. Nicholas Jackson, we know what he did. So Chelsea would walk away from that game feeling like they won a point. And Liverpool would feel like they dropped two. And, and that's, an, that's another thing. Liverpool, you're already dropping points. You see what I'm saying? I expect Chelsea to drop some points. I don't think Chelsea, I, I well, I am not seeing a Chelsea in the top four. Like before that game, but after what I saw with, a, with an addition of a Moises Caicedo in that midfield, oh man, this young Chelsea team could actually do something big this season. They could do something big because if you're going to play like that against Liverpool, the upcoming matches shouldn't be so, you know, challenging. Well, it's the Premier League. You never know. You never, you really never know. But still, they should favor their chances against the upcoming opponents. And I think they would have accepted a loss against Liverpool seeing that the, 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 the whole, you know, position that they're in in terms of the, the rebuild and the transition. These are all fresh faces, man. You know what I'm saying? So Chelsea would walk away the happier team. Pochettino would walk away smiling. Not so much Jurgen Klopp because that, that, that was not the most impressive performance um, by Liverpool yesterday at all. And I know a lot of Liverpool fans would actually agree with me. You know, Salah looked good in patches, but I think um, there were times he could have pulled the trigger. He didn't hit the post as well with his right foot, you know. So Diego Jota, I, I don't think was, you know, effective enough up top. So maybe that, that might have to have a rethink, you know. So all in all, man, I think Liverpool got a lot of work to do. They lost quite a bit of players, and I don't think they replaced them adequately. Especially a player who would have been in the Jordan Henderson role. You see, a, a Fabino role. They, 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 they're looking light. Liverpool looking light. 1-1, one, one, you know, with um, Luis Diaz and Di Sassi on the score line, on the score sheet. But I think, um, I actually think Chelsea should have walk away with all three points, you know what I mean? So, let me just see if I get some stats from the game. Chelsea, Liverpool, 1-1. One, one. I just need to check some stats, man. But, I don't know, okay. Just had to wait. In, in terms of the stats, in terms of the stats, Liverpool had 35% of the ball. This is uncharacteristic of Liverpool, 35%. Chelsea with 10 shots, 4 on target. Liverpool with 13 shots, 1 on target. The only shot on target was that goal by Luis Diaz. That was not a great performance. Pass accuracy of 79%. 377 passes. What is going on here? What is going on? Chelsea, 698 passes with an 87% pass accuracy. You got to give it to... Maurizio Pochettino for the work that he's done in such a short time with this Chelsea team. This is crazy. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed with Chelsea. And that, that is not something I thought I would have, would have been saying right now. That is not something I thought I would have been saying right now. Because, look, I know it's Liverpool, Chelsea's, you know, the result is what we come to expect. Jaws, last two games, nil-nil jaws. Well, last four games, 
were nil-nil draws. Last six games have all been draws after 90 minutes, after regulation time. So it's what we come to expect when these teams met, these teams meet, but the amount of outgoings <laughs> that went down on, in, in, at Chelsea, I expected a weaker display, but we saw we saw something totally different, man. So you gotta give it up to Chelsea, though. You definitely gotta give it up to them. So look, we must move on. Let's move on. You can't use one game and judge what the entire season will look like. So Liverpool know what they need to work on. Chelsea, they would continue to progress. Uh, who knows? Maybe they'll get worse. I don't know. But the next game is coming up against um, West Ham United, and that's an away game. And another thing. They, they played well at Stanford Bridge, and that has not been the case recently. Where they, I, I don't think they've won a game recently at, at home. And they do have Luton Town, new, newly promoted, FC Wimbledon in uh, the EFL um, Cup second round, Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Aston Villa, Fulham, Burnley, and then Arsenal. So Chelsea has a bunch of fixtures where they could go on a maddening run. So it's all up to them. You see what I mean? It's all up to them. If they go out there, apply themselves and uh, execute their plans down to a T and win these games or don't drop too many points. Chelsea, let's say by um, middle, middle October when they meet Arsenal, would be top four, would be in a very, very good position. In terms of Liverpool, and I think that might actually end up being the case, you know, if, if they handle business. You got to handle business. Liverpool, on the other hand, let's see their fixture list. So, I don't know why this thing is doing that. I need to see the fixture list and it's taking me back to the game. I don't know. Liv Come on, man. Come on. Stop doing that to me. I don't know why. Okay. So, Liverpool's next game is against Bournemouth. Then they do have a tough one up on Tyneside against Newcastle. Then they have Aston Villa. You know, when they meet Aston Villa, anything could happen. But Liverpool should fancy their chances against Villa. They do have Wolves on the road, West Ham, Spurs on the road, Brighton could be a problem, Everton. So Liverpool, I do think, have a, a, a goodish fixture list as well. So they too should, you know, look to capitalize on that. But who knows if that's going to be the case. Liverpool looking shaky. Chelsea looking solid in my opinion. Let's see what the future holds though. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about this game. Didn't want it to just, you know, happen and I, I, I don't say anything. I, I do have a lot of Liverpool subscribers on the channel. And I know you guys are actually, you know, waiting to hear what I have to say. So maybe a little later on if I do have some time after the Man United game. I'll go, I try to do a live stream, but I haven't done a live stream since I came back as yet. Still a few things to work out, but I do have to um, talk about the first week of Premier League football. So guys, I'm your boy Dominic Rich. Let me know if I miss anything in the comment section down below, any major talking points that I, I could have touched on. You know, maybe some things happened and I didn't really, you know, touch on them properly. But I'm only one guy and I'm just going straight off the top, man. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of new rules, a lot of things, you know what I mean? In terms of um, extra time and all that kind of stuff that we could get into though. But um, yeah, yeah. And I'm just seeing something that Liverpool might be closing in on Romeo Lavia as well. So we talk about that when that happens though. So um, guys, Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know your thoughts down below. Like the video if you haven't yet done so. And for me, boy, Dom. This is Dominic Rich FC. Until next time. Peace out. Rich. Squad. Peace.